The Listen Me app was created by two neurosurgeons and an industrial engineer. We sat down with co-creator Dr. William Contreras, and I asked him how he came up with this idea. I was living in Germany, and I went to a party where I saw a person with Parkinson's who was having trouble getting to the restroom. When you have Parkinson's, you can have a hundred times more difficulty to travel a distance than a person without Parkinson's. Later that night, I saw him dancing. He was moving with more agility, like a person without the disease. I thought there were two possibilities. Either he took medication and it was working, or the music was basically guiding his steps. So when I began to read through medical journals, I found that music allows for the neurons to travel faster. Essentially, music makes the orders sent from the brain to the legs travel faster. What is happening in a Parkinson's patient during the progression of the disease? Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that controls the movement and the coordination of movements. The Parkinson's patient doesn't produce enough dopamine, which is like the oil in the motor of a car. So when he or she doesn't have dopamine, he is rigid, he is slow to move and has tremors. So what the music does is produce emotions of happiness or sadness, and that releases dopamine. So our theory is that the release of this dopamine activates supplementary motor activity in the brain, not the central nervous system. And this permits the patient to walk faster and with longer strides. What is your goal with the app? The app's goal is to give the patient his independence back. So when he is laying down, sitting or standing, and he wants to start walking, he won't need to call the family member or a physical therapist nearby. With just the sound, he can begin to move faster. Parkinson's patients are usually treated uh, through more traditional methods, such as surgery, medicine. How does the app supplement those types of treatment? A patient with Parkinson's doesn't have dopamine, so when they don't have dopamine, the treatment is to replace it with medication. And the patients do well with medication for a period of three to seven years, but the disease is progressive, so the medication stops working as the neurons continue to die and they need more medication. And even with the two alternatives of surgery and medication, some patients still have difficulties in walking despite physical therapy and surgery. So that is what the app can try to help with, through specific sounds and frequencies that are individualized for the patient and through goggles that we have also created that produce visual stimulus. We can help them walk much better. Doctor, we live in a world where smartphones, technology is all around us. It's accessible to a lot of people. So what role do you see technology playing in neuroscience in the treatment of patients? First of all, this technology is not dangerous. What is interesting about the use of these technologies in medicine is that they don't harm the patient. So it is easier to do a trial and error unlike in the development of a new medicine. It is also fun for the patient. So we need to use them and we need to make them friendly for the patient. What are some of the challenges in producing this type of technology? One of the challenges is making it cheaper. Our intelligent glasses, for example, are pretty accessible as they cost less than 1,000 U.S. dollars. And in Europe, other glasses run around $16,000. But we want to make it accessible for people in developing countries like Colombia, and we want the technology to be used in all of Latin America. Dr. Contreras was very proud of the fact that the creators are all Colombian. In fact, he says that he hopes uh, that Colombia can be a place to develop more innovative technology. And they're moving back to Colombia in order for any technology that is developed by them can carry a label that says made in Colombia. Back to you.